What is going on, guys? Welcome back. Commentary for you. Chantal ate a pizza. Regardless, Amber went live for over two hours. This is a synopsis of that stream. For those that don't want to watch two hours and know what happens with very, very little of my opinion added in. So she starts off. She's laughing. She's giggling. She's saying she's nervous. Genuinely a far cry from where she was yesterday having to edit in between her sobbing. She says that she's got a lot of anxiety. She wants to make it clear the only reason she brought up Erica was a family was being harassed and that the community made a mistake on who Erica was. She admits that she did break a promise to not say Erica's name and that she felt bad. She says that she was shocked that saying Erica's name caused all this and kind of starts to go down that path of, you know, I have all these issues. She says she doesn't know what Eric and Brittany are doing with this because they look bad as well. Amber says in September she got a DM from Erica after posting about wanting a masculine woman. Amber then looked at the profile and felt that Erica was her type. The two of them opened up to each other. Amber says she learned a lot about Erica, Erica's family, and that Amber was getting paragraphs and felt comfortable opening up to her in return. She says during this time, she considered Erica a friend, and Erica expressed that her marriage was an open one, that it was financially motivated, and her wife, Brittany, lived with another partner. Perhaps, based on when you pick up this, Brittany may also have been living with her family. Amber kind of goes back and forth on that. Amber says she felt this was hectic, she didn't understand it, but she did not foresee things getting serious, so she did not push the issue. Amber initially describes the communications as, quote, super flirty friendship, and that she was in fact talking to a few people, but Erica was consistently there for her. Amber states that because Erica was being loyal, she felt an obligation to provide her more time than the other people she was talking to. Amber says she has screenshots to back all of this up, but remains steadfast she will not be disclosing them. Amber says one night she'd been drinking. She told Erica that she loved her. She thanked her for being patient, wanted to prioritize her, and ignore the red flags. She says at this point, things opened up, and eventually they got to a point where they weren't even speaking. Amber says that that time was only a few days, and that during it, they learned that Erica could, quote, not get enough of Amber, and they continued to pursue the relationship. Amber also paints a story where she had been ignoring Erica a lot and that she stopped doing this. There was a time frame from December to February where apparently they both loved each other and Amber was under the assumption that Erica and Brittany, who was Erica's wife, were still separated. At this point, Amber does clarify she was made aware Brittany is in fact a therapist and she feels that Brittany should not have had her or her partner engaging in this trolling, regardless of the intention. She also believes that Erica fell in love with her and that the two of them are using this trolling plot as a way to pivot away from reality and in turn make Amber look bad for forcing this relationship rather than focusing on Erica simply being unfaithful to Brittany. Amber states Erica has a track record of this and was also told Brittany she had cheated as well. With that said, she was made aware that Erica and Brittany had moved back in together and still wanted to pursue a relationship. And I also want to make it clear, during this live stream, Amber was getting a large amount of negative comments and she was doing her best to ignore them. She also talks about how Erica was once a hater, indicating that Watching Amber through reaction channels paints her in a specific light, which is not true. And she felt that through Erica, she was able to break away from that and show Erica the real her. Amber is, in a way, hurt more because simply saying Brittany and Erica in a video should not have removed all of those feelings. Stating that Erica contacted her as a troll initially but fell in love with her, and that speaks to the type of person that Amber is. Amber talks about the routine that they created where Amber would call her each morning. This was supposedly why Brittany was at work. 
Amber says this was initiated from Erica and Brittany having the open relationship they claimed and that Brittany was never being fully made aware of the relationship with Amber. She wrote off that because she felt since Brittany and Erica were both haters, that if Erica went to Brittany and said that she loved Amber, she may be mocked or ridiculed for that. Amber says that they would exchange a lot of pictures and videos. Amber says she would never share those images, but is fearful that her pictures and her videos may ultimately be leaked. Amber says things truly escalated during a video where they were sending back and forth, where she noticed Brittany was in the room with Erica while certain actions were taking place. Amber says when she saw this, her heart dropped. She did not believe it. And Amber then forced Erica to come clean about maintaining the relationship and marriage with Brittany. It was at this point Erica came clean about it not just being an open relationship. And then she lays out the timeline that her and Erica started talking in September. Two to three months later, she learned Erica was married. In April, she learns the marriage was actually legitimate and they were not separated. She says while Erica may have been posting photos of herself with Brittany on Instagram or Facebook, Amber was blocked on those platforms and therefore would not have had access to it. Amber admits fault. She says she entered this relationship knowing Erica was married, at least in some aspect, and she should not have done it. Amber says during this time, she agreed to let Erica move in only because she was aware if Erica did meet her and was married, she would likely not be able to return to her wife and therefore their home. Amber says she did request to be blocked and ask contact to stop, and that Erica is not being honest about the contact she initiated with Amber. And she says a couple of times that Brittany deserves better than Erica, offering that Erica is downplaying the severity of the plans her and Amber made. Amber confirms they have insecurities and infidelity in their relationship, and she uses the Life360 tracking as a way to justify this. Amber says when she initially was told about this, she was unaware of what this app was or did, and that it was all innocent at first. Amber was not aware that Brittany was tracking Erica and asked if she could be included. Alexis is brought on at that point to confirm this side of the story, and she also, for the first time during this, when discussing the tracking, indicates that she was fearful of Erica, but refuses to go into detail. She does start to bring up June 9th, which is the day things kind of culminated, Erica's uncle passes, but she doesn't go into any detail. Instead, she goes to conversations she had with Brittany, one of which is on Apathetic Facts channel. And she says she was unaware these calls were being recorded. She also indicates the call that is on that channel is edited, and she is unsure what's missing from it. She says she feels she could pursue that legally because she was unaware the call was being recorded, but she does not at this point plan to do so. She does a bit of a Q&A to end this, and just to give you a quick synopsis, she admits to using more than one number to contact her. She agrees that she involved herself in a relationship with a married woman, indicating she'd never done that before. She says Danielle is not married, and she does not want to go into detail with anyone else she's been contacting. She said she would not take this back because Valentine or Erica proves that she does have a life outside of YouTube and all of this validates that she is a better person than people project or proclaim. She does admit that Erica sent her Legos, chocolates, and a gold rose for Valentine's Day and cites that Amber only sent her a pair of headphones in March, which would obviously be after that. And Amber says she sent those headphones based on Erica working out a lot and wanting something better to listen to in terms of a quality perspective while in her workouts. She does address Tommy slightly, only to say there is a false narrative about the timeline of their relationship, saying that Tommy reached out on June 18th while her and Erica broke up on the 15th. So there is, by Amber's admission, a three-day gap between the relationships. Amber does admit that she feels stupid, she is embarrassed, that she did not know the truth until it was too late, that she did not listen to her gut feelings, and that she allows herself to overlook things, including red flags, when she feels this way about someone. 
She also does keep Alexis on the phone a majority of this stream, which a lot of people were put off by. She also goes to the bathroom during this stream. She shares a weigh-in during this stream, apparently edits on her phone, just as Chantal does. She admits she was wrong. She says some of this is, though, being dirty to just be dirty. She knows a lot about Erica and is not willing to share her private life. She does worry about more things coming out about this because she told Erica things in confidence. And she says much of that was just banter between friends. And it's normal for friends to talk about disagreements they have with other people and that perhaps Erica could share those. And it would not look positive for Amber unless we had the proper context. Amber does feel that she was played and that everything was a lie that Erica was not only lying to her, but also her wife. And she cites both Amber and Brittany love Erica, despite being hurt. She also, at that point, vaguely refers back to these threats that were made. Amber says that she wanted proof of things during the relationship. And again, much like the communication about her friends without context, this could look strange. She does offer that one of them is demanding to see separate beds that Erica and Brittany slept in. She mentions that Abby is a friend that has nothing to do with this and refuses to give away any more information about Brittany or Erica's names. And then she starts to close out about how she can't be happy staying on YouTube and that she understands people feel that she cannot work. She wants to prove to everyone that she can. She said she has money saved and she could take time off if she wanted. She says she is the one that was manipulated and should not be seen as the bad guy and that she doesn't feel the same way about YouTube as she has in the past. She no longer loves it. She feels YouTube is not meant to be. That she's created a large section for herself, and that she entertains thousands, but it's ventured off into reaction channels, and she just wants to move on, but she doesn't know how. She simply needs to have time to figure that out. She said she doesn't want to be herself anymore, offering that she wants to sell her channel and jokes that she would do that if she could keep 50% of the monthly revenue. And she agrees with some of the chat saying a job could be a nightmare, but she offers that this is a nightmare as well. She also says that the people constantly joking about her weight have given her confidence issues and that has pushed her even more to want to leave. She talks about legally changing her name and reassures people that she could work. And I just, I've really kept my personal opinion out of this, but I do just want to inject a little bit of my personal opinion. I don't know that anyone is saying Amber can't work. I think what most people are saying is Amber can't just walk into a job and make eighty dollars to $100,000 a year. It's not reasonable, and that's not a knock on her. So while those might not be her current bills, the reality is that is the standard of income in which she is used to living. And I feel like she likely would want to maintain, as everyone would, if not exceed what she's currently making. Now, to that point, she also says this issue has ceased her from making cameo requests. So, again, if she's talking about going out in the workforce and she can't even do a cameo, I don't know where we're drawing the line of I can go work. She says she does want to stay single. She also stopped taking her medication and is relying on understanding the trigger she has more so when she's thrown herself into these situations. She says she does not want to be unapologetically herself on the platform. So she admits that she does put through a bit of a facade because she feels even being herself, nothing would change. She reiterates she will not be showing screenshots, but she does sternly warn Erica that, quote, she knows what she has done in prison. She said she will watch the live they do tonight and likely come back online to address it based on how much they lie. And to close, she is getting thousands of super chats. She reiterates she needs to figure her life out. She wants to leave YouTube. She constantly feels reaction channels are out to ruin her life. She closes out by saying Britney should just leave Erica. And she has a number of ads in this live stream. And I just wanted to leave you a couple of quotes. Quote, she is going to monetize the F out of this. And quote, get her coin. Because everyone else did. Love to know your thoughts on this. Appreciate you watching it. There is two hours and 15 minutes in less than 16. Be back soon as I can with more commentary.